Hidden History is brought to you by G2A.com and our supporters at Patreon. Hailing from Cyrodiil, for thousands of years the Imperials have been amongst the wealthiest and most well-educated races in all of Skyrim. It's probably no coincidence then that they also have the largest and probably most well-organised military in all of Tamriel. Now, when talking about the inspiration behind the Imperials, one civilization springs to mind immediately. The Latin Roman Empire. Sure, it's an obvious comparison. One look at the armour of the Imperials gives you a pretty strong indication of the Roman influence, but when you take a closer look, you may just find a few things that surprise you. Let's start off with the Imperial Legion, who take their inspiration from the Roman legions. One example of this is the Imperial Oath, which all new recruits must recite. Upon my honour, I do swear undying loyalty to the Emperor, and unwavering obedience to the officers of his great empire. May those above judge me, and those below take me, if I fail in my duty. Long live the Emperor. Long live the Empire. This oath has a lot of similarities to the Roman Legion's Sacramentum Militare, a very similar oath made to the Emperor of Rome, to swear that they shall faithfully execute all of the Emperor's commands, that they shall never desert the service, and that they shall not seek to avoid death for the Roman Republic. That's not all the two militaries have in common. Not only are both organisations well-oiled fighting machines, they also share a lot of the same ranks. The Imperial's legates are very similar to the Romans' Legatus Augusti Pro Praetor, or as they're commonly called, the Imperial Legates. So yeah, that one lines up pretty well. And how about the Imperial rank of Prefect, which is likely derived from the Romans' Prefectus Castorum, or in English, the Camp Prefect. Going to show that when Bethesda designed the mighty armies of the Imperials, they took more than just a bit of armour design from the Roman Empire. In our previous episode of Hidden History, we brought up the connection between Skyrim's General Tullius and Servius Tullius, the sixth king of Rome. That's not the only Imperial to have a connection with the ancient empire though. Yes, there is the obvious ones like the Dark Brotherhood Cicero, who many believe to be named after one of Rome's most famous philosophers of the same name. Some are much less obvious, like the Imperial Emperor Titus made the second. A ruler who you assassinate in the Dark Brotherhood story within Skyrim. Some believe that this character could be based off the ancient Roman Emperor Titus, a ruler so badass that he apparently only needed one name. Much how like Skyrim's Titus was well known for planning and taking part in the Battle of the Red Ring, which successfully retook the Imperial City. Rome's Titus is famous for his Siege of Jerusalem, which took place in 70 AD and led to the Roman Empire's takeover of the city. That's not the only thing they could have in common though. Much like how you can assassinate Skyrim's Titus, many believe that the real Titus was assassinated as well. Although, some ancient texts like the Babylonian Talmud say that an insect flew into his nose and picked at his brain for seven years. So, who can really say for sure? And yes, that's their actual story for his death. Next up, let's talk about the capital of the empire itself, the Imperial City. As many of you probably already know, this city is divided into seven distinct districts. This, maybe not coincidentally, mirrors the seven hills of Rome. Much like the districts, these hills serve to separate different parts of the city. One of the most prominent districts in the Imperial City is the Market District, the heart of commerce and trade. This is very much like Rome's Forums, a place that was usually reserved exclusively for businesses and one of the economic centres of ancient Rome. Then of course there's the Arena District, which is clearly influenced by Rome's infamous Colosseum. And here's a bonus piece of trivia for you. The very first Elder Scrolls game, Elder Scrolls Arena, it was called that because when development began, the idea behind it was a more simplistic arena fighting game. I guess we can all be glad that Bethesda grew a little bit more ambitious or we could have spent all five games in the Arena District. Don't know how that would have turned out. Hmm. Now, let's move on to our comment showcase. This week's good comment comes from Mendek1000, who lets us in on the origin of Skyrim's Iron Swords. 
their look is actually taken from Ulfbert swords, serving as a kind of transitional sword between the 9th and 11th centuries. These blades improved on the older Viking swords and proved very popular for hundreds of years before sadly being replaced by more advanced medieval weaponry. Thanks for that comment, Mendek. Next up is our bad comment, coming this week from John Vasquez, who asks us, Did you know I have a Daedra in my pants? And he's fighting a Aedra. And, well my friend, it tickles. Um, we didn't know that, John, but we, we do now. So, thanks for that. Moving on, we have our trivia. On our previous episode on Ghouls and Fallout, we asked you what is being referenced by Veronica Santangelo, who is voiced by Felicia Day, carrying sporks in her inventory. And many of you guessed correctly, it was the Dr. Horrible's sing-along blog. This week, our question comes from Skyrim. In Swindler's Den, you will come across an archery training dummy with an apple perched on its head. This is a reference to what famous master crossbowman who was forced to shoot an apple off his son's head? A. Benjamin Franklin B. Robin Hood C. William Tell D. Christopher Blake Tell us your answer down in the comment section below. And while you're at it, why don't you tell me your favourite Imperial as well? out of any Elder Scrolls game, you just choose. Is it Martin? I mean, Sean Bean, everybody loves Sean Bean, right? I guess we'll see. Hmm? Just tell me down below and I'll see you next week.